Hello and welcome to the Empowered Expat Wife podcast. If you moved abroad following your significant other and are looking to create a fulfilled life on your terms there, this is the place to be. I'm your host, Camilla Quintana, and I'm so excited to be on this journey with you and to inspire you to create the kind of life abroad you truly deserve. Hello ladies, it's Thursday, and you know what Thursday is? Thursday is her day. Her who, you might ask? Well, her is you, my expat lady friend, and I am so grateful to have you here listening. Um, I actually just figured out how to check the statistics, um, like download statistics for my podcast, and that revelation made my day. Thank you, Amal from Tandem Nomads, for for showing me how to figure this out. I am super excited because I did not know that so many people were listening. So hello, everyone. I don't necessarily know who you are, but I am I'm really thrilled and really grateful to to have you here. And um, yes, I'm definitely going to bring so much more good and juicy expat content to you. So stick around. All right, so I'm again in the wonderful company of my baby boy who is sleeping here and the topic of today is the expat identity crisis because I know you've been through that. I know you might be going through that with so many new starts, you know, going here and there, going back home, uh, starting over in a new environment, making new friends, doing new things. I mean, come on, our, our identity is challenged. And so today's content is actually based on a little speech I recorded about a year ago. And uh, the article that I wrote for that was actually just picked up by an association. So I was like, you know what? Yes, this will be today's topic. Uh, This is very current, very applicable to us all. And yeah, so with no further ado, I'm going to hand this mic over to the Camilla from a year ago who is uh, basically the same. (laughs) Um, And I would love to receive your feedback. So hop over on my social media. On Instagram is probably where I hang out the most, at coach.camillaquintana. And uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what your takeaways were, what uh, what things came up for you, what your take is on this. I would love to know. We're all here to inspire each other. So, um, so yeah. And also, by the way, if you're over there, please introduce yourself and say, hi, I listened to your podcast, um, you know, or tag me if I inspired something that you wrote. I would just really love to get to know you. Really, like, honestly. Okay, so... I'll see you over there. All right, so let's go. Let's start with this episode. Welcome back to Real Talk. Today, I want to talk about the expat identity crisis and why that might actually be a great thing. My name is Camilla Quintana. I'm a certified life and relationship coach for women who live and love abroad. And I know that one thing many people struggle with when they move abroad is their perceived loss or change in identity. Have you experienced that too? Um, So you knew exactly who you were and who you were not when you lived back home, right? There were clues all over the place that sent out a message to yourself and to others about who you were. Because of the family you grew up in, the school and university you went to, the people you hang out with, the, the neighborhood you lived in, the profession you had, and so forth. Um, So all of these things made up your identity, your self-image. They provided a context and that gave you a great deal of security. But when you moved abroad, all of a sudden, these things lost meaning because now no one knows the the schools and places you went to. Uh, You may no longer continue in your line of work and uh, maybe due to the language barrier and lack of social connections, you have gone from being a social extrovert to a seemingly quiet loner. So having an identity crisis and feeling really misunderstood and insecure even seems like the logical consequence. But what if I told you that this could actually be a reason to celebrate? Now, if you're raising your eyebrows at me, let me explain by telling you a little story about myself. I was quite of a happy, bubbly girl growing up, and I remember as a a preteen, I had lots of friends, lots of fun, and I got the nickname Miss Sunshine somewhere. 
Um, but then at one point at school, I received some negative backlash for being this happy-go-lucky type. Because even though it didn't mean that I didn't have any problems, of course it didn't. But still, my personality triggered something in others and in their insecurities, possibly. So I learned that by being the way I was, I was too much. I was too loud, too much in their face. And that people who are too cheerful annoy others and don't get their sympathy. And also, as you guys know, uh, because I recently posted some snippets of the Salsa album I, I recorded a long time ago, I used to want to be a singer. But again, that got me some feedback like, who does she think she is? She must think she's all that, but she's really not. So you know what happened as a consequence? I quieted down. I got more reserved. I would hardly play my music to anyone out of fear of being criticized and laughed at. So the other day, I shared a short clip with some of you of me singing into a hairbrush to my own songs and dancing like I didn't care. And um, if you missed that, that's just too bad. <laughs> so as I was doing that, I started hearing all of these voices going, people will think you're too much. You're too old and too professional to be goofing around like that. Who do you think you are? And that, my friends, is the key question. Because throughout our childhood and our youth and even our adult life, we keep putting layer over layer on top of our authentic selves. Because we learned that if we were too nerdy, daddy would prefer our sister. If we were too loud, we'd be too much for others. If we were too sensitive, our friends would make fun of us. And if we, let's say, pursued our passion and became an artist, our family would be disappointed. So um, belonging is one of the strongest needs of the human species. And as children, our survival literally depends on it. So we go to great lengths in order to feel like we belong. We start disowning parts of our true identity in order to please others, in order to safeguard our role and our place. We make important life choices, not according to what our heart says, but to what our loved ones and society and culture says, and we don't even notice that. What we call our identity is actually an extension of our ego. It's a self-image that we've created and cling to because we think it will allow us to belong and to receive love, which is what we so desperately want and need. However, I believe there comes a point in everyone's life where keeping up at least certain parts of the self-constructed identity becomes so draining and you feel like you want to throw in the towel, but now you can't because so many things and people depend on you to be the way you are and to do what you do, supposedly. So um, also by the time when that voice gets a little louder inside of you and points out what's not working for you, you've probably already distanced yourself so much from that innate wisdom of who you are, why you are here on earth, what your unique gifts are, and what truly brings you joy. And that's why leaving your old identity behind like many expats do can actually be a great way to discover what's underneath that image that you have of yourself. Peel back those layers and see who you are at your core. And um, to help you grasp what this is about, let me, let me give you a few tools. So first, and I've asked you this before, if someone were to take everything away from you, you know, your gender, nationality, race, profession, etc., what would be left of you? And, and don't think about how broken you'd be if that happened. Just try and identify who you would be if it weren't for all of those things. And that will give you great insight into your essence. And then secondly, I also like to ask, what would you do if no one was watching? Really, think about it. Um, because the answers might surprise you. I, for instance, would be singing into a hairbrush much more often. And my clients have told me things like, I'd finally start that blog or vlog without fearing any negative backlash. Or I'd stop collaborating with this association because I actually don't enjoy it at all. Or um, I'd finally have the courage to start my own business or to study something completely different that no one believes I have what it takes to. 
And what about you? And then thirdly, you can reflect back and think about what brought you joy when you were younger. Can you incorporate some elements of that into your daily life now? Um, also another great tool uh, to just help you get a glimpse into your authentic core that I believe we're all meant to discover and get in touch with while we're here is what activities, what opinions, what people and decisions make me feel light and which others make me feel heavy. So pay some attention to that in the coming days. Go with your gut feeling, that's really important. You may not always be able to opt for the things that make you feel light and happy, but at least knowing about them will be so revealing to you. And then as a next step, you can try and add some more of the makes me feel light things and people into your life and reduce some more of the makes me feel heavy and drained things. So. If you struggle with your perceived loss of identity abroad, if you miss the person you used to be back home, if you feel misunderstood and not seen abroad, allow for the possibility that your identity is not fixed and final. There might be so much more to you, this beautifully unique you that you have yet to discover. There may be things out there for you that you haven't even considered doing, but that would actually make you really happy. There may be ways for you to share your unique gifts with the world that you didn't even know you had, uh, that, that you didn't have the opportunity to in the past. So what is one thing that you'd love to do with your life is if no one was watching? I'm so curious to find out. Let me know in the comments or send me a PM and allow me to get to know this unknown and authentic part of you. And with that, I'm out. I thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more. Speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. Please make sure to share this episode with your expat besties and show me some love in the reviews. Want more juicy content designed for expat wives? Then head over to my website, www.camillaquintana.com or follow me on Instagram and Facebook at coach.camillaquintana.